Today, we're focusing on how to defend against classic denial-of-service tools. By understanding how these tools exploit server weaknesses, we can spot vulnerabilities and build stronger defenses. Each tool reveals a lesson, like managing connections or recognizing unusual traffic patterns. We'll cover how to spot this activity early and what it teaches us about our server's limits. No scripts, no instructions, just practical lessons for building better shields. Ready to see what these tools can teach us? Let's get started. First up, Slow Loris, a tool that quietly ties up server connections by sending data painfully slowly. Imagine someone calling a pizza place and never finishing their order, blocking the line for everyone else. Slow Loris doesn't need much power, it just exploits the server's patience and limited connection slots. The lesson? Attacks aren't always loud floods, they can be slow and sneaky, draining resources quietly. Defenders should watch for lots of connections stuck in a waiting state, often from the same IPs, with little data transferred. Normal users connect and disconnect quickly, these connections just linger. Early detection means monitoring for these unusual patterns. To defend, set strict timeouts. If a client doesn't finish its request quickly, close the connection. Limit how many connections a single IP can make at once. These simple steps can block low-volume, pull, high-impact attacks. Remember, we study these tactics to build shields, not to use the weapons. Every old trick is a lesson in resilience. Let's keep learning. Next, Torshammer and Goldeneye, tools that send slow, incomplete requests, often hiding behind networks like Tor. They're like a dripping faucet, subtle at first, but over time they can flood your system. These attacks mimic real users, making detection tricky. The lesson? Don't just watch for traffic spikes, analyze behavior over time. Look for gradual increases in resource usage or many connections stuck waiting for responses. A sudden surge in connections from Tor exit nodes can be a red flag. Defend with rate limiting and JavaScript challenges. Real browsers can handle them, bots usually can't. Always compare activity to your normal baseline to spot anomalies. The goal is smarter, not just stronger defenses. Studying these attacks helps us adapt and improve. Use this knowledge ethically, only to protect, never to harm. The best defense is understanding the enemy's playbook. Let's move on. Now, Loke and Hoice, famous for enabling massive crowdsourced DDoS attacks. Imagine thousands of people shouting at a building at once. That's what these tools do to servers. The key lesson, attacks can come from everywhere, not just one source. Defenders must prepare for distributed attacks. Blocking a few IPs won't cut it. Detection is usually obvious, a sudden huge spike in traffic from many IPs. Requests are repetitive and simple, overwhelming bandwidth and server resources. Manual blocking is futile. You need cloud-based DDoS protection to filter out attack traffic. These services absorb and scrub massive floods before they reach your server. Relying on your own infrastructure isn't enough for large-scale attacks. Always remember, Participating in such attacks is illegal. Our focus is defense. Distributed attacks demand distributed defenses. Stay prepared, stay protected. Let's see what's next. Meet Hulk and Xerxes, the chameleons of DOS tools. They generate unique, seemingly legitimate requests, making each attack look like a real user. This forces servers to work harder, fetching different pages and running more processes. The lesson application layer attacks require smarter monitoring, not just network-level defenses. Look for subtle clues, rapid requests for many pages from one IP, missing resources like images, or high CPU load without real user activity. Web application firewalls, WAFs, are essential. They spot suspicious patterns even when requests look unique. Behavioral analysis helps too. Learn what normal user activity looks like and flag anything that deviates. These tools show that attackers adapt, so must our defenses. It's not about blocking traffic, but understanding it. Use layered defenses, WAFs, behavioral monitoring, and smart rules. Every new trick is a chance to improve. Study the shapeshifters to build smarter shields. Let's keep going. Finally, T50, a tool built for raw, overwhelming power. It blasts servers and networks with a torrent of junk traffic using multiple protocols. Think of it as a fire hose, not a dripping faucet. The lesson, sometimes, attacks are just about volume, filling your bandwidth pipe until nothing else gets through. Detection is easy. Your network is saturated, users can't connect, and monitoring systems light up. The traffic is messy, 
often with spoofed IPs, making blocking difficult. Defending alone is nearly impossible. If the attacker has more bandwidth, they win. Cloud-based DDoS mitigation is essential. These services absorb and filter attacks before they reach you. Have a plan in place before an attack starts. Reacting too late means losing the battle. T50 reminds us to protect every layer, from application to network. Know your limits and partner with providers who can handle the flood. Preparation is everything. Let's talk about how defenders put this knowledge to work. So how do defenders use these lessons in real life? First, map your threats. Identify where your systems are vulnerable to each attack type. Set up monitoring and alerts for specific patterns, traffic spikes, slow connections, or unusual requests. Good detection is like having sentries who know what to look for. Next, plan your mitigations. Cloud DDoS protection for floods, timeouts for slow attacks, WAFs for application layer threats. Pre-planned responses mean faster, more effective defense. Test your defenses safely. Use controlled environments and always get permission. After an incident, analyze what happened and improve your defenses. This cycle, map, detect, mitigate, learn, is the defender's workflow. It's about being proactive, not reactive. Every lesson from old tools becomes a step towards stronger security. Build your workflow on knowledge, not fear. That's how defenders win. One crucial rule, never test or attack systems you don't own or have explicit permission to test. Unauthorized testing is illegal and can lead to serious consequences. Security professionals always get written consent before testing. Only test on your own equipment or in a controlled lab environment. This is how you learn safely by building, breaking, and fixing your own systems. If you find a vulnerability by accident, report it privately. Never exploit or publicize it. Many companies offer bug bounties for responsible disclosure. Ethics and legality are non-negotiable in security work. The line between defender and attacker is clear. Always act with permission and integrity. Use your knowledge to build and protect, not to harm. Responsible testing is the foundation of trust in cybersecurity. Learn, test, and improve. Always the right way. That's the true mark of a defender. Old DOS tricks teach us how to build stronger, smarter defenses. It's about understanding the strategies behind them. Every lesson helps us spot threats, loud or quiet. Security is a shared, ongoing effort. Learn, adapt, and stay vigilant. The more you understand, the better you can defend. Keep building, keep learning. By sharing knowledge, we build a safer web together. Stay curious. What attack vector should we analyze next? Let us know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and keep defending.